change. You never fail, oh God. You are, you are, you will always be. You are, you are, you will always be. So we raise up holy hands to pray. of my day to quiet down my busy mind find a hiding place worthy you are worthy I open up my heart and let my spirit worship yours I open up my mouth and let a song of praise come forth. Worthy, you are worthy. Of a childlike faith and of my honest praise, of my unashamed love. And of my sacrifice, of my unashamed love. You're calling me to lay aside the worries of my day, to quiet down my busy mind and find a hiding place. Worthy, you are worthy. Open up my heart and let my spirit worship yours. I open up my mouth and let a song of praise come forth. Worthy, you are worthy of a childlike faith and of my honest praise. Of my unashamed love, of a holy life and of my sacrifice, of my unashamed love, worthy you are worthy.
right? We're going to read our scripture for today, and I, I want to, uh, well, I think you're already aware this isn't something I do all the time, so I, des- I decided to change the scripture based on uh, how, I, how I'd uh, come out at the uh, end last night of, of my uh, preparation, so these are our scriptures for today. Genesis 1, 27. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created him. And then, in 2 Corinthians 4, 4 through 6, the God of this age has blinded the minds of unbelievers so that they cannot see the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. For we do not preach ourselves, but Jesus Christ is Lord, and ourselves as your servants for Jesus' sake. For God said, for God, who said, let light shine out of the darkness, made his light shine in our hearts to give us the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Christ. Well, let's, let's pray real quick there. Lord, thank you for your, your work in our lives and the image that you gave us as image bearers of you, Lord. I pray that you will convey your message today through me. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. I don't really feel like a preacher, and I don't really feel like I like to stand behind a pulpit all that much. So if you don't mind, I'm going to stand over here. In a certain sense, I've been looking forward to sharing today. My nature is to be an introvert, to do my best to sit off in the corner and observe everybody else. Everybody else. And if it were going to be a corner in this room, it would be the far back corner where nobody could see me. So this is a, this is a growing process on my, on my behalf to, to do this today, but I think it's where God is guiding me to step out out of my comfort zone to a certain degree and uh, speak a little bit more. I've been doing it for all my life in my career. I go in front of groups and I speak uh, and do trainings and I help people do their job and I help people do counseling. But the idea of standing up in church and, and delivering the message just seems different to me. And so I hope that you'll bear with me as I, as I do this. As I thought, but part of the reason that, that is uh, important to me to speak today is that I'm not sure that you, I'm sure that you probably aren't aware of this, but there are a lot of people in this church who um, are image, image bearers of, of God to me, who have uh, been, well, people I admire. And it's interesting because when I moved back here over seven, well, almost seven years ago, I didn't really know you personally. But because of how you were talked about and, how, and, the, and, the, and, the, and the intermittent engagements I had with some of you, but how you were talked about by my parents uh, impacted me how I thought of you. And uh, it's, it's a pleasure to be a part of this church. There's a lot of great things that happen in this church. So one of the things I usually do when I work with folks or do a training or anything, I usually try to get participation. That's because I'm an introvert, and if I can get somebody else to talk, it's always good for me, all right? So you heard me stumble through trying to teach an abstract concept to uh, kids whose brains aren't actually ready to learn that yet, so uh, hopefully you paid a little bit of attention to my struggles. I realized it this morning when I was trying to figure out, how am I going to do this? This is going to be tricky. I thought I had it figured out until I actually um, kind of got there. But I want to hear some things from you about uh, what people around you in this church or in this community, h- how they um, reflect Jesus. Think about the ways people around you reflect Jesus in this congregation or in our community. And please share. I don't, I'm not asking for a long, drawn-out discussion. One word is fine, but please share. Mary, generosity, hospitality, compassion, 
inspiration, caring, acceptance, encouragement. Friendly. <clears throat> what, did, what was that? Honesty. Honesty. Thoughtfulness. Steadfast. Steadfast. Is there any activities that, that this group does that should be recognized? Teaching? Yes. I'll give you, I'll give you another clue. The morning breakfast is one, one that I think about a lot. I think people from other communities think about a lot is the morning breakfast. What are some other things like that that we do? The Quaker Bakers. That's a new one. Providential Homes. The Love Fund. All right. Whatever somebody needs. We get that at Quakerdale too. Lots of great volunteers who, um, when we say we need something, they say, what can we do? So Christine is a cook at Quakerdale, and, and she is going on and on about Christine and, and cooking for the kids at Quakerdale, <laughs> just in case you couldn't hear that, because it sounds like it's an out, out, a reflection of Jesus for her, right? It's more than just cooking food? Mm-hmm. That's what we like to hear. Well, if you've noticed... The title, of, the title of my talk really is about enhancing your Jesus reflection. This is a quite obvious statement that this church is very, very involved in, in, in reflecting Jesus, all right? And, and that's why it's so much fun to be a part of you. We, we, can, we can spend a lot of time worrying about what other people are doing or we can actually try to do something about it. And, and, and this, this group is a very, very special group. You know, we, we support a lot of missionaries. We, you know, we, we have people all over the world that, that people are supporting and to, to, to reach the, the lost in other countries. And there's a lot of great support that comes to Quakerdale right here in our, here in our own community, in our own, in our own state. I know that there's the hospital in Africa, all kinds of things like that, that we do as a group and as individuals that enhance, our, that, that are our Jesus reflection. You know, I don't think that this is something that we think a lot about. And, you know, how do we reflect Jesus? I don't think it's, I, I understand that this is, a, this is my own concept that I'm kind of coming up with, but... I don't think we think about it enough. And I think it's really important that we do because this is something that God gave to us. Nobody else, no, nothing else that he created has this ability. It was given this gift of his image. It, grows, it, it helps us grow closer to him. And it fits right in with the, the, the healthy Christian life of how, how Jesus matters in our life. And, and when people look at us, I hope, I hope that sometimes they see Jesus in me. Somehow, some way. If I can keep moving in that direction, it's good. Direction, it's good. What I also like the, the idea of Jesus' reflection, reflecting Jesus is that it's active. And, and it's something that I can do. It's not, it's not something that I, it's just, it's just always going to be there and I can't, I can't impact it or I can't change it. It's something that I can actually make a difference in. I believe that as we do better at connecting with God, or we, we will do better connecting with God when we reflect Him better. He's created us to connect with Him. 
And it helps us to really identify with him when we're, when we're making the effort and we're learning about how to reflect him better. And I'm hoping to give you some ideas on how to do this. But, you know, there's some people who you may come in contact with or some days you may feel this way too, that it's, there's things that keep us from, from re- reflecting Jesus. Sometimes it might be because we tried and failed in the past. We tried to, to do the right thing or we tried to act the right way or somebody didn't accept us or laughed at us, rejected us. Sometimes we feel like we just don't have what it takes. You know, there's a lot of times that I feel like I'm, I'm not really worthy to do that. I, I don't do that well enough. I do make so many mistakes that, that I need to, you know, it, I'm, it's not my place. And then I think there's a lot of people who aren't really sure how it works. So hopefully as we go through this, I'm going to um, share some light, shed some light on some of those things. Well, my big question for today, and this is what I want you to try to focus on as I'm going through this, is What if I improved my Jesus reflection by just 10% this next year? What if by this time, Thanksgiving next year, I improved the way I reflect Jesus in in my life just 10% better? What would be different? My belief is that we'd have richer relationships with one another. We probably have some new relationships. I think that we'd um, be more fulfilled in our life Because that's what we're made to do, is to reflect Jesus. I think we'd have more self-confidence because this is what we're designed to do, is reflect Him. And I think that would flow out into everything, even our work, our schoolwork, our jobs, and, and our family. So, I've got a newsflash for you here. There's Jesus reflectors all around you. And there's no one right way to do it. There's not one way to do it. You can do it any way that God has gifted you because he's gifted us all in our own ways. Now, as we reflect on all the things that our church does and individuals our church do, the idea of enhancing it um, is, is something that excites me because if, if we get better at this, Jesus is going to be seen by more people. And that's really what we're called to do. So my first thing that I want you to, I want you to know as we talk about in, um, enhancing our Jesus reflection is use what you've got. Don't try to copy someone or be someone else. And I think a lot of the times we look around us and we say, well, that person's really good at that. I can't, I can't even come close to that. That person does those. Those people are involved in that. I, I'm not good enough for that. I don't know how to do that. And I think this is sometimes one of the things that we use to uh, avoid uh, reflecting Jesus. And I... You know, I've got a story that I'll share with you, and I'm going to try to share some stories because I always like stories when, I, when I'm listening to a sermon or listen to somebody talk. This one is about my most prized possession at the age of four. And it was a, a red wagon. And I, I don't know, Dad, how much you remember this red, red wagon, but it, it, was a, it was really, you know, it was my star of my wheels and motors thing. I love anything with wheels and motors. And I don't know, I don't know whoever taught me this, but if you got, if, what I did was I took this wagon and I flipped the handle up and I put my knee inside it and I'd push with the other foot. Has anybody ever done this? Okay, I've never really seen anybody else do it, but I was known all over Sutherland, Iowa for the kid with the red, as the kid with the red wagon. I think that it's possible that I could have run funny because my left leg had to be way stronger than my right leg. 
I went everywhere in that wagon. I, I remember riding it to the barber. I remember riding it to see mom at the bookstore and dad at the uh, co-op. I remember picking up groceries in it and running errands for mom and going all over our huge town of Sutherland, Iowa in my red wagon. I rode that wagon so much that where my knee rested and where the toe of my shoe rested, the paint was wore off of it. I used that wagon to help other people. And, and, and it wasn't anything very important. And it really wasn't my plan because mostly I was just doing what mom told me to do. But I want you to remember that you don't have to have anything special, no special gifts or talents. Use what you've got. You have to notice what you've got. And I think um, sometimes we don't, re sometimes we think we've got to be perfect or we've got to do it just right, and we just aren't. So if you've got a red wagon, use it. If you've got a talent, use it. If you've got a friendship, use it. If you've got money, use it. If you've got something that God has given you, and we all have that, I want to encourage you to use it. Don't wait. Point two, start now, but expect challenges. You know, anytime you do something the first time, it's always kind of rough. Have you ever experienced this when you try something new? Let me tell you a little bit of story about this one. And, and, and you're going to like me because this is going to go pretty fast. Uh, this, we have three boys, you know that, but they all use the same bathroom at our house. And if any of you have had boys, you know the problem that comes from that is that there's a lot of smells that come from that bathroom that really should have gone down the toilet. And so the other day, I, I, was, I was wandering through Walmart, I think, and I came upon the air freshener part of Walmart. <clears throat> and it was, uh, it was, it was like um, the Holy Spirit guided me right there. And I saw these things, and they're called, um, what are they called? I wrote it down. They're called plug-ins. They're called plug-ins. And they use the plug-in there, and they create heat, and it causes the smell to radiate really good. So I thought, this is, they're on sale. That, that was the Holy Spirit, too, I'm sure. Because <laughs> hardly anything gets bought in our family if it's not on sale. Right? <laughs> so anyway... I bought, I bought this four-pack of these things, and I took them home, and I was kind of happy about this because this isn't something that enters my mind very often. That's why I think it was the Holy Spirit. I mean, it only enters my mind when I walk by the bathroom and I smell it. So I brought it home, and I, before I forgot, because I can kind of have a one-track mind, I took and I opened up the package, and I plugged one in. And... Uh, I thought it smelled a lot better in there. I mean, I, Holly doesn't like the smell of the ones I chose. Is that right? No, she doesn't like the ones I smell. But, but the smell was different. That's all I got to say. <laughs> <clears throat> the problem was that the plug-in's right above the counter there in the, in the bathroom, and the thing was leaking. And I just could not figure out why it was leaking. So... Um, there, there was one day I came in and it was turned the other way around. So instead of being the way I had it in there, it was up, upside down. And, and I, I chewed the boys out for that because, you know, leave it alone. Would you just leave things alone, boys? I mean, this happens all the time. I have one special boy who loves to tinker with anything. And uh, so uh, I said, you know, could you just leave things alone? I'm trying to, you know, make it smell better in here. Well, the truth is, that I, had put, I hadn't read the directions, and I had put it in upside down. In all my mind, I thought that it should go down, but really it draws it up out of the canister. And so all I was doing is pouring out the, the scent on the counters. <laughs> but, I mean, that's just to, to give you an example. That's my first time, but I'm going to tell you the next time I put one in there, I did it right. First times are always hard. 
They don't always go the way you plan. And especially if there's no directions. At Quakerdale, we do all kinds of things that we've never done before, and we don't even know anybody who's done it. And you know, when you do that stuff, it's, it's the first time stuff. And the second time and the third time, it gets a little bit better every time. So I want to encourage you, if you're going to start now, be ready for some setbacks. So don't, 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 make, it, don't make it hard on yourself. Don't expect miracles. Um, but there's no way to start and get it going without just starting. And I want to encourage you to start reflecting Jesus in a way that you've never done it before. And my third point is that I think we need to remember to join others in reflecting. So, as, as, we, as we find things that are our niche, the world is not so big and so small anymore. Well, it's pretty small actually because there's so much information out there that you can find people who are in your niche that, that like what you do. And I want to encourage you not necessarily to try to match everybody else, but if you're interested in, in reflecting Jesus in a certain way that maybe nobody in, in uh, your family or your neighborhood does, I want to encourage you to seek out other people and, and join them and invite them to, to join you in reflecting Jesus. Also, if you're one of those people who isn't sure how to reflect Jesus and somebody invites you to join them, I want to encourage you to Try it out, because the truth is that a lot of times we don't really know our niche yet. Sometimes we don't even really realize what God has given us, because um, we, it just hasn't come up yet. So I want to encourage you, if you're going to reflect Jesus, try joining someone else. And, and also in that process, I want to, I want to encourage you to... Um, do it cross-generationally. One more story. This, this is about age 11 now. So we went from 4 and 5 up to age 11, and the whole summer had been spent, the whole summer from school had been spent at my, Mar, my, friend's Mark, my friend Mark's house. And Mark lived in Mason City, Iowa, and he had, his dad was a tinkerer of all sorts. They had an old lawnmower there that we decided that we were going to ride. And his dad was okay with that. Essentially what we had done is we had turned it into a go-kart. Okay? Only you really could call it a mo-kart because it, it was just went as fast as a, as a mower. And our big goal was to make it go faster. And so we spent all summer long working on this go-kart, mo-kart so that we could get it going faster. So the day, after lots of trials and tribulations of learning about things we had no idea about, we finally got the pulley switched around and, and we were riding it. And so Mark took his turn and then it was my turn and I got on and I was riding it and it was a lot faster. The thing is that I wanted to go faster still, and you know this is a this is a lawnmower, and it had, you know, more upper gears. So, what I did was I was I was getting ready to go faster, and I reached down to shift it to the next gear up. Well, it was right then that I put my hand between the chain and the sprocket, and it cut off my finger. The only thing I really remember from there on is about waking up in the hospital. And the, I, I, don't, I don't really, you know, I, I kind of remember dad because he, he has a real problem with blood. <laughs> and he, he couldn't really be around me. I kind of remember that. But as long as it was wrapped up, everything was good. Uh, but the, the only thing I really remember is waking up in the hospital and I was in there for three days. It was a three, three or four hour surgery. And I was in there for three days afterwards. And probably as I look back on it now, it doesn't have anything to do with my finger or the go-kart. 
that I, are my main memories. Although it was a long recovery with my finger, there was lots of pins and wires and all kinds of gory details to putting my finger back on. But as I look back now, I think about the people who came to visit me. And somehow, at that age of about 11, the people who came and visited me, you know, they brought me the, the essentials, Mountain Dew and M&M's. And, and they just were nurturing. They were supportive. They, they came alongside me because they cared about me. And, and I'm not sure that before that point in time I realized that I had a church family and that they were behind me just as much as my family was. And I think that possibly to that point in my life and, and sometime after it was possibly one of the biggest um, impacts on my, my spiritual development of my, of my life to that point and beyond. So when I talk about um, joining others and using your reflection to join others, I want to encourage you. We have a lot of great folks who come and watch the kids play sports. They come to plays. They come to music events. I want to encourage you to keep doing that. You're great at that. Keep enhancing your, your uh, Jesus reflection with, with uh, the folks around you. Because it really does matter. And I, and I don't know, I think, you know, a lot of times in really difficult situations, we have the greatest opportunity to make a difference. So that was a big deal with me in the hospital first time and all those things. But I just want to encourage you to realize that you can make a difference in someone's life. And it's not a real big deal. If you just join with them and, and you use your Jesus reflection in their, in their lives. So, quickly to review, this, this is the whole thing, folks. We're doing all right. No, I don't, I don't see too many people going to sleep yet. So, First, be yourself. Don't try to copy others. Second, first times are always hard. Don't, don't give up. Plan for the worst. Hope for the best. That's kind of, that's kind of one of my normal phrases. And then invite others to reflect Jesus with you. Join others. Don't go alone. Don't be a lone ranger. Because that's not the way God made us. He made us to be together in this. And he made us as a relation, relational group. So thank you for letting me share today and, uh, and staying awake. Last week, um, Justin had us uh, fill out cards that we placed on, on the tree over here. And he asked uh, Robin and myself this week if we would also um, introduce the, the thought through the rest of the, the Advent season as we head toward Christmas to place additional cards up every week until Christmas. Uh, today, we're going to be focusing in on hope, um, which you have heard a little bit about earlier. And I'd like to read a scripture in, in reminder of that hope. And again, Isaiah says, the root of Jesse will spring up, one who will rise to rule over the nations. The Gentiles will hope in him. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. I try to think of words that would make sense to me about hope. Um, when, you, when I go into that type of thinking, my brain just goes crazy. Um, you guys know that, like Rob, I'm more so of an introvert. I don't particularly care for being out front. So. I constantly, I have ideas that are bubbling in my head all the time. And in this case, I hope that they come out well enough so that you guys understand what I'm trying to say. Um, 
But I, I do know this. I know that God's hope for us is that we will find everlasting peace, love, joy. I know that for certain. That, for me, is a hope in itself. Advent, for me, and transition over to hope is, I'm hoping that as we head toward Christmas season, waiting in anticipation for the one that came on Christmas, that we find what he came for us to find, what he came to give us each and every day, that we enjoy life the way that it's supposed to be with him in our lives. So this week, I'd like to invite all of you up after a couple minutes of thinking about the hopes that you have for this coming year, this coming season, and to grab a card and place it up on a tree. Put your, your hopes up there also. I'm gonna give you a couple minutes to think about it. And then if you guys would like to, I see one's already coming off preparing for us to bring up more. Um, if you guys would like to come up, I, I may not have to say anything. You may just come up without me saying anything at all. But think about your hopes and then come forward and place your hopes on the tree.
As we close our service today, and thank you, I, I, maybe it wasn't my talking, but it was just the cold temperatures that kept you awake, but I'm glad that you're all awake. Lord, thank you for each one here today. Thank you for how they reflect you and how they're going to reflect you even 10% more in the next year. Lord, I pray that you will work in our lives and our families to glorify you, that you will give us the ability to and the energy to respond to you in the ways that, that you want us to. Be with us as we go today. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.